Good evening from Spotlight. Tonight, tackling sewage in the sea, in rivers and on our beaches. The government promises action to clean up our coastline. I'm at the Conservative Party conference in Birmingham where the government's announced a massive increase in fines for illegally discharging sewage into the sea and has done a U-turn on its plans to abolish the higher rate of income tax. Meanwhile, Southwest Water faces millions in financial penalties over missed targets. The good news, lower bills for customers. Exeter City are looking for a new manager after Matt Taylor left the club today, heading for Championship side Rotherham. I'm at St James Park to find out what's next for the club. And business for chimney sweeps goes through the roof as people try and save on their central heating bills. Hello, thanks for joining us. The Environment Secretary has told the Conservative Party conference that he's taking action to tackle what he calls the unacceptable discharge of sewage into rivers and seas. It follows a raft of protests against water companies who routinely discharge sewage, but critics say that upping fines for water companies may not be effective. Southwest Water says it's investing millions into the wastewater network, its largest investment in 15 years. Well, our political editor Martin Oates is at the Conservative Party conference earlier. I asked him about the timing of today's announcement. It is interesting timing. I mean, just a week ago... At the... All right, Martin Oates, our political editor at the Tory Party conference. Thank you. Well, it's not just the government getting tough on water companies. So is the regulator off what? Today it announced that 11 out of 17 companies will have to knock money off customers' bills as a penalty for poor performance. A total of £150 million. So what does it mean for customers? Well, Wessex Water has done well. Hitting its targets, that means it gets a reward. Theoretically, it could now put up bills, but it says it'll defer any increase because of the cost of living crisis. South West Water, on the other hand, hasn't done so well. It's going to have to pay back customers' just over £13 million. Here's the problem. Sewage being discharged into the Gannel Estuary near Newquay, polluting a popular bathing spot at Crantock. After repeated protests, a new sewer was laid to take that waste away from the river and the beach. South West Water says a significant proportion of the fine relates to one single event. Back in August last year, when pipes were damaged near Truro by a green energy supplier. Not its fault, it says. The company also says it continues to work to deliver quality services at an efficient cost so bills remain as low as possible at a time when customers need, excuse me, need it most. Well, will you get some money back and when will that happen? Well, in the next financial year after April 2023, how much will it be? Well, we don't have a figure for that yet. It'll possibly depend on how much water you use. But Southwest Water supplies 800,000 homes and 70,000 businesses, so it's not going to be much. Now, the CEO of Offwatt, David Black, today said we expect companies to improve their performance every year. Where they fail to do so, we will hold them to account. Now, in other news tonight, a pensioner from Devon has started to campaign to make life easier for people using mobility scooters. 75-year-old Colin Shaddock from Barnstable has only been using a scooter for the last few months and says he's shocked at how hard it can be and how rude some people are. A local councillor has vowed to work with Colin and says they're on a mission to make disabled access better. Colin's been showing our reporter, Andrea Ormsby, some of the issues he faces. Colin Shaddy. Andrea Ormsby, BBC Spotlight, Pilton. Well, Andrew Barge is from Living Options Devon, a charity that helps support people with disabilities live the life they want to. When you see stories like that from Colin Shaddock in Barnstable, how does that make you feel? Well, I don't think anyone could watch it and not feel a great deal of empathy for Colin and uh, the struggles that he has with his condition and the clear pain that he is going through on a daily basis. Um, and, you know, increased by the kind of situation that you showed there in terms of getting up and down off the curb. And what are the common issues that people with disabilities face when it comes to accessibility? Oh, they can be a whole range of things. It really depends on the disability. So it could be, um, obviously, a disability relating to sight or to hearing, um, obviously a mobility issue. 
getting in and out of um, buildings, public buildings or, or private buildings. Just being able to get out of your house sometimes can be a real struggle for people. And it clearly affects their, their quality of life hugely. And when we have historic buildings, ancient town centres, how big is the challenge to make places accessible for all? Well, it clearly is a problem, and what we don't want to do is to destroy the uniqueness of, of local towns and villages or, or buildings um, and to spoil them for, for other people. But you, you can make small changes to places to, to make an improvement for, for disabled people to be able to improve their access. So... Um, I think it's a question of working together with local authorities or local um, businesses and the disabled individuals or groups or what, whoever is representing them to try and find a way around these problems to, even if we can't make a full improvement, just to make a better um, situation. You talked about small changes. If we could just touch on the issue of cost, when businesses and organisations are already under financial pressures, can you see that they might be worried about the potential cost of adapting properties or making making changes to improve accessibility. Yeah, absolutely. But I think this is a situation which is going to become even more common, particularly in a county like Devon with its ageing population. Of course, disability often um, increases the older we get and these issues become more of a problem. And also, I don't think we should forget society um, that, you know, disabled people have budgets as well. They have money to spend. So why would you want to try and isolate them from society and not letting them contribute to the local economy? All right, Andrew Barge from Living Options, Devon, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. People have been reacting to the news that one of Cornwall's largest and most established breweries is entering administration. Skinner's Brewery, a much-loved Cornish company with a selection of award-winning ales, has been a fixture in Truro for more than 20 years. Here's Johnny O'Shea. Today at the Skinner's site in BBC Spotlight in Truro. Some sports news now and Exeter City are looking for a new manager with Matt Taylor set to join championship side Rotherham United. The 40-year-old former defender who played 160 times for the club took over the reins at St James Park in 2018 and led them to promotion last season. With the latest on that and the rest of the sport, here's Andy Burkett. It's the news... OK. Chimney sweeps in the southwest say they're cleaning up as people look to cut their gas and electricity bills. They say homeowners all across the region are reopening real fires or installing wood burners to save money. And as our business reporter Scott Bingham has been finding out, the whole sector is booming. Now, how well do you get on with your siblings? Four brothers from Tiverton are taking on the challenge of a lifetime to row across the Atlantic. The brothers, who are two sets of twins, are due to set off for their 3,000-mile adventure in December. They've been practising off Exmouth at weekends, but will be facing more than a month of endless rowing in unpredictable conditions. Here's Johnny Rutherford. Johnny Rutherford, BBC Spotlight. Good luck to them. And staying with sport, competitors from Devon and Cornwall have helped Great Britain win gold medals at the 2022 Surf Lifesaving World Championships in Italy. Thomas Trebilcock from Falmouth and Joshua Gammon from Woolacombe were part of the mixed relay team, which won gold for the first time at the World Championships. There was a gold first for the youth team as well. Cornwall's being represented by nine athletes in the youth and open teams, with four from Devon. OK, well, it's been a calm, sunny day for lots of us today. Let's get the forecast with David. Thanks very much, Kirk. Hello, good evening. We've had some lovely... Bye for now. Kirk. Great, thank you, David. Well, that's it. We love hearing from you, so if you want to get in touch, email us spotlight at bbc.co.uk. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.